Here at the Valve World Expo, Emerson brings lots of things, especially these things standing behind us. I'm saying things is completely the wrong way to, to explain what is here, but I know someone who can explain it to me completely and well. Philip Schall, thank you so much for your time today. What did you bring to the fair? Yeah, thank you that uh, you visit our booth here on the exhibition. And we bring to the fair um, our complete portfolio for final control, we call it. Um, this means uh, butterfly valves, ball valves, um, so for isolation on off applications, as well as for the regulation of flows um, uh, for, for pipeline uh, um, flow control, uh, like the control valves we see over here, the green ones. Um, so a very, very broad uh, portfolio that we can show here. So what are the strengths that Emerson brings to the picture? Um, the biggest strengths of Emerson is that we have the complete portfolio coming from the valves we have, the different valves um, for the different applications, to the actuation part, and doesn't matter which actuation, climatic, electric, almost everything, and the accessories. So the complete automation package we need for the valve portfolio, we can deliver and it is in one hand, which is easing the business of the customer and provides the best solution fit for the parameters our customer needs. Peter Schall, thank you so much. Um, Emerson's portfolio is so much bigger than what you just talked about, even though that's also amazing what we talked about. Matthias Schinze is here um, from Emerson as well, and he's deep in conversation. But I'm going to actually disturb you right now to ask you about the portfolio that you have, that you're offering, and what, what what people can expect, what your customers can expect from you as a company. Well, as you saw this week, we're focusing on the final control portfolio and how we can have our customers in productivity, digitalization, and sustainability, as the theme says. Uh, beyond that, Emerson is known for having a much broader um, portfolio. Uh, goes from measurement solutions uh, to the controls, uh, the on-off uh, application that we see this week. On top of that, we have the DCS layer, as we say, is the uh, uh, control systems software. And really on top of that, with our recent acquisition of Aspitec, or 55% of that, uh, we have now a software layer and we have formed an industrial software uh, unit to help our customers to progress in digitization, um, automa automation, and all the software solutions that they're looking for, really speeding up productivity, safety, reliability, everything that customers are looking for. So we're really excited. How have the requirements changed the customers are, are needing because of the challenges that the industry is facing regarding the pandemic or uh, you know, the, the war in the Ukraine, the energy crisis? How have the, the requirements changed? Well, they're not new. They have just been more severe now. I mean, energy crises have accelerated the need to be more productive, not waste energy, contain energy, uh, be more productive. Circular economy is one of those big themes. So again, our technology can certainly help customers to look into investments to detect leakages, waste, and, and prevent that. Um, I think there certainly there's more attention to that. Particularly attention is, of course, to software solutions, to digitization, the apply application of the digital twin, as we call it. So I think the attention is there. We have been here for a while with these solutions. Uh, we, we almost lack the resources to meet all the demands that come at us. So that's good, good, good news. But at the same time, we also have the same supply chain situation that everyone else has in the market. So we, we, it's really hard to keep up with the demand. Demand is good. Customers have are very interested in our solutions. Um, it's a bit uh, actually tough to find, you know, even resources in all the labor or uh, material to even meet that demand. So do you think that you need the policymakers to give you a hand uh, on certain like supply chain situations, um, you know, regarding different policies that you have to adhere to? Well, I, I'm not an energy expert per se to say what our government could do to, you know, make energy costs uh, a better play. We cannot change the energy costs. We can only help with uh, saving energy or using energy more productive. Um, what could be done on sustainability? I think a lot has been done already, and I think the incentives are there for, for uh, co companies and ourselves in the private space to do more on sustainability. So I think um, from that perspective, I'm not looking for uh, maybe deregulation, and I'm not saying at the expense of safety. We're obviously playing in the chemical space, for instance. We don't want to sacrifice safety here. But like permissions to build uh, uh, hydrogen or LNG terminals, if we think about these themes that are now coming up, uh, speed in Germany is sometimes in the you know in the approval process a bit of an issue.
speed is not an issue here at the Valve. Um, at least now we're all back together, and it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for bringing your portfolio and what you're showing and telling us about what we can expect in the future from Emerson. Thank you so much for your time.